Hi, I'm Mary Huff. I'm a VRAD radiologist and breast imaging specialist. And today we're going to be talking about echogenic breast masses. I have nothing to disclose. So the objectives today, we'll be spending a few minutes just talking about breast mass imaging in general. Then we'll discuss the lexicon that we use to describe breast masses. And finally, we'll be talking, the core of our discussion will be about echogenic breast masses and management considerations to biopsy or not to biopsy. So this talk is based on a helpful radiographics article that I like called Echogenic Breast Masses at Ultrasound to Biopsy or Not to Biopsy. It was published in 2013 by the Division of Breast Imaging at Beth Israel. And they have given us permission to show the images included in that article. So just a general breast mass imaging overview. We have two purposes with breast imaging. We either screen asymptomatic women for early detection of breast cancer or do diagnostic evaluations for symptomatic patients or patients with indeterminate screening exams. We have several modalities that we use as tools to help evaluate women or men with breast problems um, or asymptomatic patients. Mammography, tomosynthesis, or 3D mammography, ultrasound, magnetic resonance imaging, or breast-specific gamma imaging. Today, we're primarily going to be talking about the modalities of mammography and ultrasound in evaluating echogenic breast masses. So we use the Breast Imaging Reporting and Data System, commonly referred to as BIRAD, and it's a quality assurance tool that standardizes reporting in breast imaging. We have standard procedures, standard report structure. Today, we're going to be talking about our standard lexicon as it applies to epigenic breast masses and standardized recommendations and assessment categories. So let's talk for a few minutes about how we describe breast masses on ultrasound using the BIRAD lexicon. So first of all, breast masses are three-dimensional space-occupying lesions, which means you need to see them on two planes on ultrasound. Sometimes, or most of the time, real-time scanning can help further evaluate, especially when coupled with physical exam. And on our reports, we're going to be describing the shape, orientation, margins, echo pattern, and posterior features of the mass. And this will help us determine our management considerations going forward. So the shape options we have to describe masses are round, oval, or irregular. For orientation, we will describe it as parallel, which is wider than tall, and usually that's associated with benign masses, not parallel, taller than wide, and that's usually thought to be a more suspicious finding. Breast mass margins can be circumscribed or not circumscribed. Circumscribed margins are usually thought to be more benign, whereas not circumscribed are thought to be more suspicious. The descriptors in this category are indistinct, angular, microlobulated, and speculated. The breast mass echo pattern has six different descriptors, and these are relative to the subcutaneous adipose tissue. So a hyperechoic breast mass will be what we're going to be focusing on today, the echogenic breast masses, but there will also be anechoic, complex cystic and solid, hypoechoic, isoechoic, and heterogeneous. Breast masses also have posterior features. They can have posterior acoustic enhancement which we often see with benign breast cysts, but we can also see them with homogeneous solid breast masses. They can have posterior acoustic shadowing, which is sometimes seen with more suspicious masses. They can have a combined echo pattern or most no posterior features. And once we have described the breast mass, we will come up with recommendations and an assessment. So for the assessment, there are six categories. Starting with zero, um, which needs additional imaging, one is negative, two is benign finding, 
Three is probably benign, which will be followed up with some recommendation for interval follow-up. Thyroid four is suspicious. Five is highly suggestive of malignancy, and those two categories usually are followed with a biopsy recommendation. Thyroid six is pathologically proven malignancy. So now we're going to start talking about hyperechoic breast masses at ultrasound. So they're relatively uncommon. Breast lesions at sonography are hyperechoic approximately 0.6 to 5.6% of the time. And most of the time, these are going to be benign. However, about 0.5% are malignant. So if you see a hyperechoic breast mass, it is not exclusively going to be a descriptor for a benign lesion and malignancy cannot be entirely excluded just on that descriptor alone. You must correlate with mammogram and clinical history. So there are a, a list of benign and malignant lesions that can be hyperechoic on ultrasound. Some of the more common are lipoma, hematoma, fat necrosis, silicone granuloma in patients that have had either a implant rupture or implant, um, sorry, free silicone injection. Malignant lesions, however, can also be hyperechoic, including both invasive ductal and lobular carcinoma, metastasis, and lymphoma. So we're going to run through five cases as examples of hyperechoic breast masses and run through some diagnostic and management considerations. So the first case is a 52-year-old female with palpable lump. It's a hyperechoic oval circumscribed mass on ultrasound. It's in parallel orientation. There's no internal vascularity. So in this case, would we biopsy, not biopsy, or it depends? Well, in this case, it depends. We need to correlate with mammography. And on the mammogram, we can see a circumscribed oval radiolucent or fat-containing lesion. So in this case, this is consistent with a benign lipoma. It's a common benign tumor composed of mature adipocyte. It's going to be soft on physical exam as a palpable mass in this case. Lipoma, even though we're discussing them as hyperechoic in this example, they can also appear hypo or isoechoic on ultrasound. There should be no internal vascularity and they are circumscribed radiolucent masses on mammograms. So when you have a well-correlated hyperechoic ultrasound mass to a fat-containing mass on mammogram that's going to be benign, which is assessment category by RADS 2, and no further follow-up will be required. Lipomas, however, can enlarge in response to hormonal stimulation, so symptomatic lipomas can be surgically excised. Case 2 is a 65-year-old female with a developing asymmetry on her screening mammogram that persisted on diagnostic exam. So here is her diagnostic mammogram with that developing asymmetry that's persisting on spot compression views. And it correlated nicely with this hyperechoic oval mass and parallel orientation. In this case, we biopsy because the hyperechoic mass correlated with a developing asymmetry. And this case turned out to be an angiolipoma. So Angiolipomas are rare benign tumors composed of mature adipocytes and vascular proliferation. However, they do not always show up as fat-containing masses on mammogram like our first case of lipoma. So often they will have to be biopsied for histologic diagnosis. They can have faint skin discoloration on physical exam. They're usually circumscribed isoechoic to hyperechoic mass with internal vascularity on ultrasound, and they can appear solid on mammogram or as an asymmetry. So this case was assessed as a BIRADS-4, and non-pathology demonstrated scattered microthrombi and small blood vessels. Case three is a 48-year-old female with non focal breast pain. On this sonographic image, we see an echogenic mass within a focally dilated duct without internal vascularity. And in this case, we did biopsy. This is a case of an introductal mass. Usually, introductal masses 
can present either just in an asymptomatic patient or with spontaneous nipple discharge. The differentials for intraductal mass includes both benign and malignant causes, including fibrocystic change, apocrine metaplasia, which was this case, intraductal papilloma, DCIS, or invasive ductal carcinoma. But because of the benign and malignant causes, it is assessed as a BIRAD-4 and should be considered for either biopsy or surgical referral for excision. Case four is a 35-year-old female with, a pal with multiple palpable breast masses. And the ultrasound image demonstrates a hyperacoic oval breast mass and parallel orientation, but with internal echoes that are obscuring the, obscuring the posterior margin and with some posterior acoustic shadowing. In this case, management depends. We need to correlate with mammograms. And the patient's mammogram demonstrates at the radiopaque BB, the palpable abnormality is a round mass, which is similar density to the patient's silicone breast implant. So in this case, we would not biopsy because these findings are consistent with a benign silicone granuloma. Silicone granuloma are inflammatory masses enveloping free silicones. They are most often seen with either extracapsular rupture or injection of free silicone. Characteristically, on ultrasound, they are hyperechoic masses with fine internal echoes extending deep to the posterior wall and obscuring distal structures, termed snowstorm, which was demonstrated in this case. And they correlate with dense mammographic masses that are similar in density to the silicone implant. So this is a BIRAD2 assessment. Case 5 is a 68-year-old female with developing asymmetry on a screening mammogram that persists on diagnostic exam. So here is her persistent developing asymmetry on mammogram that persists with her spot compression view which correlates nicely with this round epigenic mass that is circumscribed just under the skin without an internal vascularity. In this case, we biopsied the mass because it was associated with a developing asymmetry and it came back as a hematoma, which is localized hemorrhage. Um, in these cases, clinical history is key this history did not include a history of known trauma, which is why it was assessed as a BIRAD-4 lesion and recommended for biopsy. But in cases where a trauma history is known, these lesions could be assessed as BIRAD-3 or probably benign, and short-term follow-up could be recommended to ensure resolution. The natural history of hematoma would be that you would expect it to become smaller and more hypoechoic over time. However, if it is followed and it does not improve, that would also warrant biopsy. So we talked for a few minutes about breast mass imaging in general, talked about the breast mass imaging lexicon for BIRAS, and then talked about a few management considerations for epidemic breast masses. I hope you have found this lecture helpful. And thanks again to Radiographic for allowing us to use their article for educational purposes. Thank you for paying attention.